This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. The first three episodes of The Wire go into painstaking detail unraveling the steps and process leading up to the Baltimore Police Department making a drug bust. But when they finally make the bust, they find someone beat them to it. Where that, man? This is how we're introduced to Omar Little, the most iconic character on one of the greatest shows of all time. Omar is a step ahead. He's the classic Western stick-up man recast in urban Baltimore. I ain't tossing nothing, bow tie. Robbing drug dealers, outsmarting the police. He might be playing the game, but even when he cooperates with the law or gangs, it's clear he's doing so on his terms. I believe anything you say. That's up to y'all, really. Omar lives by a code. I mean, there are some rules here, right? Rules? Yeah. No mistakes, no bystanders. No taxpayers getting caught up in the mix. And he sets the parameters of that code. And look, I never put my gun on no citizen. Omar is a rogue agent, a true rebel outlaw. For such an iconic, memorable character, he received a relatively small amount of screen time relative to some of the other major characters. That Omar left such an outsized impact was a testament to several things. The character was a bit of flair for the theatrical and mythical in a show that was overall pretty dedicated to understatedness. Omar created his own mythos on the streets. Mars is the god of war, right? Planet two. Well, I know it's a planet, but the clue is Greek god of war. Ares. Ares fits. Thanks. It's all good. See, back in middle school and all, I used to love them myths. Stuff was deep. <laughs> Truly. But that mythos extended into the show itself. Y'all need to open this door, man, for a huff and puff. Hey, yo, lesson here, babe. You come at the king, you best not miss. But more importantly was Omar's position within the broader themes of the show. In my past series of videos on The Wire, I talked about how The Wire's attention to detail, realism, and accuracy make it great, how the unique setting each season brings to the story illustrates Baltimore as a character, and how small moments with characters are used to reveal the show's broader themes, and how all of these things work together to illustrate the systems and institutions in Baltimore and the difficulty of reforming them. But while those themes are fascinating to discuss and that thesis is responsible for a lot of the show's depth and lasting impact, those things are only slowly revealed over time as you watch the show. To be a more successful TV show, The Wire had to grab audiences' attention and make you care about its characters long before it had time to really unravel the details of its more complex themes. Nah, darling, I'm cool. The Wire is one of the first shows I remember watching that made me sympathetic for two characters that were in direct conflict with each other. Jimmy McNulty is perhaps the closest thing the show has to an obvious protagonist, and as a viewer, I was drawn to root for him in his goal of doing better police work. D'Angelo Barksdale, on the other hand, is a drug dealer. He's one of the people McNulty is out to lock up. But somehow I found myself also wanting to root for D'Angelo. How can you want two characters to achieve their goals when those goals have competing outcomes? A show developing sympathy for characters that are in opposition is more common in TV now, but at the time The Wire hit screens, it was a much more novel idea for television. There are several ways you can make characters that are at odds sympathetic, but I think there's a very specific reason why we're drawn to root for so many of the characters in The Wire. We usually root for rebels in stories. Narratively, we love an underdog. There are few stories made about the existing forces of power simply defending and maintaining their power. It's not a compelling narrative for viewers. We want to see the little guy take down the big bad guys around him. The Wire is full of rebels, characters that in their own way are pushing back against an established system and set of institutions that are much stronger and more powerful than they are. In season one, McNulty is a rebel within the police force. He often disregards the bureaucratic authority above him, fighting to accomplish what he calls good police work. Wallace is also a rebel, fighting against the systemic influences that are pushing him deeper into gang activity. I just, I just don't want to play. I just don't want to play no more. Right. So is D'Angelo, although he's deeper into that system. Yeah, but the game ain't gotta be played like that, yo. And Bubbles, though he relies on the illegal drug trade to maintain his drug use, works as an informant against that very drug trade. In season one, the characters our sympathies lie with, and the characters we want to root for 
are the ones that are pushing back against their own institutions. Many of these characters aren't admirable people, and none of them are perfect. Jimmy is an openly pretty terrible person, D'Angelo is even a murderer, but I think we're willing to overlook those things and sympathize with them because these characters recognize that something is wrong with the world around them and they want to see change. You gotta let me live like I need to live. You tell Avon, Stringer, and Donnette, all of them, to leave me be. Instead of just blindly following the path that's set out for them by the system, the characters that we dislike in the show tend to be the ones that align themselves with the system, that don't see a problem and don't do anything to seek change. There are many characters that viewers' sympathies shift for over the course of the show's five seasons. In the first season, I didn't really find myself sympathizing with Stringer Bell, but I was somewhat by season three. What changed? Well, from season one to three, Stringer moves from being someone who perpetuates the institution he's in, the drug trade, to someone who wants to reform how that institution is run. Officer Prez is one of the most despisable characters in season one, but by season four, he's someone I'm rooting for and want to succeed. But Prez isn't the same character in season one and four. Over time, he changes from someone who simply perpetuates and benefits from the system he's in to one who sees the problems with the system he's in and actively works to improve it. The same goes for Bodhi, who I hate in season one for murdering Wallace, but by season four, Bodhi is ready to push back against the system he's a part of the system that pushed him to murder Wallace, and he ultimately loses his life because of it. And when he does, it doesn't feel like cathartic revenge for Wallace, it feels genuinely sad. Some characters reflect the opposite of this. Kirketti starting out is a rebellious force in politics, pushing for change in the system, and he's a fairly likable and sympathetic character. But once he becomes mayor, he loses some of that rebellious spark, and we begin to lose our sympathy. These rebellious characters are the lifeblood of The Wire. Bunny Colvin fights against the very laws he's upholding and then against the way education is done. Lester Freeman, in his own way, pushes back against the aggressive, violent, manipulative tendencies of the police force with his quiet and calculating approach to police work. But the most rebel of all the rebels is Omar Little. We can root for characters that are in conflict in The Wire because the true conflict of the show is not really about police officers versus drug dealers. It's about individuals versus the institutions they reside in. Look, man, I do what I can do to help y'all. But the game is out there. And it's either play or get played. Instead of casting one side as the established power and the other side as the rebels, the wire casts institutions themselves as the established powers and the rebels as anyone who is willing to push back against the corrupt elements of their institution. The wire doesn't paint individuals as the enemy, but institutional forces that incentivize the bad behavior individuals choose to participate in. This perspective doesn't eliminate the personal responsibility and agency of individuals, but it does shift the way we view those things. If the system is the true villain of the show, Omar holds a unique position relative to that villain. Every other rebel in the show is a part of some aspect of the interlocking series of systems and institutions in Baltimore. The drug dealers and dock workers align with organized crime, the police officers with the corrupt police department, Karketi ultimately with a corrupt city government, but Omar is the one character that is clearly his own man. He doesn't play by the rules handed to him by a system, but strictly by his own moral code. He even flaunts the rules of the game, holding himself to an even higher moral standard. He repeatedly allows people to live when they fully expect to be killed. Yeah, I want to report a shooting over here at the new motel on North Avenue. Even though killing them would be seen as collateral damage within the game. Omar stays away from deadly violence unless he sees it as justified retribution. When one of his crew is accidentally killed in a firefight and Bunk confronts him about it, he tries to appeal to the death as just the cost of doing business within the game. Shoot past that, y'all gonna have to call this one of them um, cost of doing business things y'all police be talking about all the time. You feel me? No taxpayers. Shoot the way y'all looking on things. 
ain't no victim to even speak on. Using the unfeeling attitude with which the drug and police institutions treat the death, but Bunk challenges that position. We had us a community, nobody, no victim who didn't matter. And Omar, even though it goes against the advice of his trusted confidant, he working you with guilt, boy. Honors his conscience over the rules of the game. I still feel like I owe something, Butch. While his day-to-day -day might come from playing the game, most of his actions that we see in the show are motivated by the pursuit of justice when people he loved or cared about are killed or put in danger. See, all I know is whoever did them that way, they gets got. When he eventually realizes that his playing the game puts people around him in danger, he exits the game, only drawn back in because of a wrong committed against someone else that he loved. Omar has a terrifying mythos on the streets. A businessman such as myself does not believe in bad blood with a man such as yourself. He's a character whose name carries weight. So you're gonna rob me now. I need to remind you who I am. And his character represents an important thematic element at the core of the show. But the final ingredient that made the character so lasting was the actor behind the role. The brilliance of Michael K. Williams' performance was to play a character that fully embodied the myth. Because Omar come back tomorrow. And the next day, and the next day, and I will put a bullet in all y'all behind what happened right now. You heard? Making it believable that people ran at the mere mention of his name, all while bringing a genuine humanity to that role. The writers of the show often demanded a lot of their actors, leaving important motivation out of exposition left to be revealed on the faces of the cast. When Omar decides to follow his conscience instead of accepting the rules of the game, it's the visible guilt and turmoil in William's performance that makes the character's actions feel motivated and genuine. He brought a character that could have been cartoonish to life with a rich complexity. It was a careful balancing act in a performance that in many ways reflected the careful balancing act of the show as a whole. The Wire paints a world where we don't judge a character by what side they're on or what institution they're a part of or what they've done in the past. In The Wire, we judge a character by the spirit and attitude with which they face the world around them. Omar Little, like everyone else on the show, was not perfect, but in the face of a complex world of corrupt, interconnected institutions, he may have been the only character who lived free from the bonds of those institutions. If you would put all of them, our scenes from the show together, you would have over a feature length film's worth of material. I looked through all of that in preparation for this video, and there was a lot of cool stuff in there that I just didn't have time to include in this video. So I've made a companion video that examines what Omar's code is specifically and how that evolves over the course of the show, and you can watch that video on Nebula. Nebula is a streaming platform created by myself and a bunch of other great creators so that we have a place to post our videos that's owned by us. You can watch all my content on there ad-free and before it's on YouTube alongside the content of a ton of other great creators like Patrick Willems, Jacob Geller, Like Stories of Old, and a lot of others. And the best way to get Nebula is to get Curiosity Stream. When you use my link in the description below, you can get an entire year of both Curiosity Stream and Nebula for less than $15. That's 26% off the normal price. Curiosity Stream is one of the best places online to watch documentaries. They recently added one of my favorite documentaries of all time, Art and Craft. It's about a notorious art forger. It's a really interesting look into that world but it's also just a fascinating character study of a very unique person it does look like a million dollars because that because actually that's worth about a million maybe not quite watch it right now alongside the thousands of other great titles on curiosity stream and my omar's code video alongside all the other great content on nebula when you subscribe using the link below not only do you get access to a bunch of great content but you directly support my content and a bunch of other creators like myself sign up today using the link on the screen the wire is my favorite tv show of all time and if you haven't seen my other videos on the wire i definitely recommend you give those a watch Thanks so much for watching and special thank you to my patrons for their support.